I'm not going to take this up with the AEC just yet. Even if your constituents tell you to? <laughs> I don't think a congressman's job is to do just what he's told. His job is to do what he thinks is right. I don't think this is right. And if my friends back home had known the whole picture, I don't believe they'd have drawn up this resolution. That's where I need your help. How? I'm flying down there tonight on the 9 o'clock plane. Can you come with me? You talked with any of the other fellows, Congressman? No, I came to you first because I gather you had most to do with the resolution. But you'll agree that to make up your mind fairly, you have to know all the facts. See, I don't think you know all the facts. I used to feel the same way you do about atomic energy until colors straightened me out. To me, it was just a bomb, and so I hated it. Well, Mr. Colors, isn't that about what it is? It's mostly what you read about, I grant you that. It's mostly what it's been used for so far. That's the tragedy of nuclear energy. But it had to begin at Hiroshima. No wonder the world is confused. Many of us are afraid. Mr. Vernon, think about primitive man thousands of years ago before he learned the use of fire. All fire meant to him was forest fire that might burn him to death, fire from volcanoes. He was afraid of it. He hated it. Naturally, he never thought that fire would become man's servant instead of his master. And you think atomic energy will be? Oh, yes. In spite of Hiroshima, if we control it rightly, as fire has to be controlled rightly, it'll be one of the greatest blessings we've ever... I'm not asking you to take his word for it. The colors convinced me by showing me a little film they made in Washington. Now, before I act on your resolution, I'd like him to have the chance of doing the same for you fellas here. Tom, you've seen demonstrations of atomic energy at work as a force for good in industry and agriculture. Now we go on to a more dramatic use of this God-given force. This girl is suffering from one of mankind's most dread diseases, cancer. She has cancer of the thyroid gland. A few years ago, this would have meant her case was hopeless. Now she has a chance. That glass looks like it has plain water in it, but actually it contains hope. Hope in the form of a radioactive iodine solution. Now, most people know that iodine is used in treating thyroid, but let's explain where this radioactive business comes in. Here we see the young lady on the examination table. Suppose, instead of the radioactive solution, she'd swallowed a tiny wristwatch. Then, if you could listen closely enough, you could hear a ticking in her throat. In the same way, a little bit of atomic energy in the solution she drank is now sending out signals from her throat. These signals are being picked up by the apparatus suspended over her neck, and so provide a new and tremendously valuable guide to the doctor in his efforts to help the girl. Another use of atomic energy as a tracer is in brain surgery. Work is being done on the use of radiophosphorus for the detection and exact location of brain tumors. And the accuracy of the information that this new method supplies is leading to revolutionary results. Already several cases of brain tumor, hitherto considered hopeless, have been successfully operated on with the aid of this great new tool of medicine. Medical research is just one of the many uses of atomic energy as a benefit. Before we review the other beneficial uses, let's look at the many places in America where for many years thousands have worked in the field of atomic energy. Well, you've given us plenty to think about. Of course, it's mainly in the future. Don't you want to contribute to the future? <laughs> now you're needling me about the resolution. Of course I am. That's what I'm here for. Good night, Congressman. Good night. Good night, Tim. When's the next meeting of the council? Tomorrow. I think I'll stop over. Maybe you fellows will consider it again. Maybe. Radio phosphorus is a tracer. Tell me more about that. Well, there's a surgeon in Boston using it with some kind of a Geiger counter to locate the exact spot of the brain tumor. Mm. Has it been successful? Well, of course, it's all very new, but he's already had results in cases that seem to be hopeless. Mr. Vernon, do you have some personal interest in this? Yes, my grandchild. The little girl you saw this afternoon. She's dying of a brain tumor. Do you have this surgeon's address? Sure. Let's go to your house. We'll get him on the phone. Yes? Dr. Cooper? 
This is Congressman Maynard. Forgive me for calling you at this hour, but Professor Cullors gave me your name, and this is pretty important. A constituent of mine, Dr. Peterson, would like to talk to you. Yes? Here he is. Dr. Cooper, I'm calling about a young child, a patient of mine. Yes. Well, uh, the symptoms seem to indicate a uh, growth in the lower region of the cerebellum. He's on the phone now. Dr. Peterson's going to suggest we fly her to Boston for examination tomorrow. Of course, you realize it's only a chance. I know. But this morning, there was no chance at all. Well, let's get going. If you fellas agree, Maynard and Cullors are going to sit in with us and listen. Well, sure. Warms my heart to see a congressman listening for a change. Is everybody here? How about Doc Peterson? He went to Boston with him. Oh, John, I thought you were going back with her. I was, but I changed my mind. I'm going to take the other plane tonight. You know, I had some sort of share in passing this resolution. And I didn't think it was right for me to walk out on it now. Well, let's start by hearing what John has to say. No, Mike, this is a personal thing with me. Because just now I can only think of my own granddaughter. It isn't fair for me to try and influence you other fellas. You've got to make up your own minds on the whole picture. But I've got this to say. Because of atomic research, there's a chance now for my granddaughter. And what's even more important is a better chance for children like her in the future. That is, if we don't put obstacles in the way of atomic research. That's why, for my own part, I've got to withdraw my vote on the resolution. I understand how you feel, Mr. Vernon. But as you say, we have to take the whole picture. Now, is it worth it? As far as I'm concerned, that isn't the point. I voted against atomic energy because I thought it was the work of the devil. Now I know I was wrong. I see that now. But what about Hiroshima? No, we've got ourselves to blame. Mankind for fighting wars and, and, and uh, using what God has given us for, uh, for destruction. Yes, but it happened. And maybe it'll happen again and much worse next time. So is it worth it? May I say something? Go ahead. I can only answer Mr. Benson by telling him why Colors and I came down here yesterday. You know, I don't leave Washington every time a city council passes a resolution. But this is something about which every town in America has to think clearly. And let's hope every town in the world. Of course, you're right, Mr. Benson. The energy in the atom is the most destructive force the world has ever seen. But as Colors has shown us, it can also be one of the greatest blessings God has ever given us. Which is it to be? Because on that depends the future of mankind. Sure, we sometimes wish it hadn't been invented. We're afraid of the responsibility because the results will be so terrible if we misuse it. But it has been invented and we have to take the responsibility. We can't just shut our eyes to it. You, Mr. Benson, you saw the destructive side at Hiroshima. And now all of you, with the hope that's been given to John Vernon. You've seen a little of the good it can bring and its promise for the future of the world. That's how high the stakes are, for good or for evil. And that's the challenge you've accepted, to do your part in making atomic energy not a curse, but a blessing to mankind. Of course, this is just one town and there are only a few of us in this room. But all over America, and all over the whole world, too. People must, sooner or later, face this same challenge. And I pray that they, too, make the right choice. Oh, we, we've muddled and we've made mistakes. But this time, God has entrusted us with a physical force bigger than we've ever had before. One that can destroy us or can lead us on to new horizons. And with this choice before us, God willing, we shall not fail. <laughs>